yeah, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Scott DeYusa, and I'm the technical sales engineer for uh, Tether Tools. And um, I welcome you to my musical world here in Nashville, Tennessee. I see Mia says she has visited Nashville some years ago and will we'll be back. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun town. I've lived, I've lived in this town for a couple of years now, and I've been a musician all my life. So I'm really having a lot of fun with um, meeting new people and playing guitar with people and taking pictures of bands and, and, uh, and all that. Um, my, my personal favorite thing uh, in photography is concert photography, which I just got to shoot my very first show in over a year a few weeks ago. It was a, an all-star tribute to the late, great Eddie Van Halen, and I was so excited to get out and take pictures again um, and, uh, and, and sort of get out of this space. So I hope you all are getting a little bit of freedom. No, Ronald, no Fender Stratocasters, but I would love to have a Strat. I would. I just don't have one yet. <laughs> I got guitar people online. Um, yeah, I got, got my stuff around here. So um, this is my creative space for everything, music, photography, video, all of that stuff. I've got everything going on. This is my home office that I'm sitting in right now. And when we talk about tethering and why tether, um, there's a lot of reasons for tethering. I mean, it's not just studio photography reasons for tethering. Um, you can tether in a number of different ways for um, all sorts of purposes. And one of the purposes that I have is the camera that I'm looking at you right now. I wish I could do this in person, but I just have to look at a lens of a camera. You know, it's a, it's a Nikon Z6 with a 14 millimeter lens, which gives me good jazz hands um, and stuff. And, uh, but tethering, I've got that camera tethered to my computer right here. Um, running a live broadcast through a program called Ecamm Live, which is a Mac-based program for um, live broadcast. I use a little thing called the Stream Deck to switch my scenes, and that is my video production, but it is a tethered workflow. Um, I also have next to me right here, I have a photo workstation that I'm going to be using for this class today in my little makeshift studio back here. We'll take some pictures. I decided to take some pictures of my five string Jackson bass today because it actually looks really cool in images. And um, so we're gonna be shooting some pictures live in just a few minutes. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you about um, what it is about tethering that you may be thinking about for your own workflow, but what, what I think about my own workflow as well, because there's a couple of different ways to get tethered and um, it's not really hard. It's actually really very simple, but I wanna take you from what do you need to this is how it works and show you all the end results. So I thank everybody here for, uh, for being a part of this. And if there's any questions, please put them in the chat. I may see them as we go along, but Jessica is here. She can answer uh, pretty much anything that goes in the chat if she needs to interrupt me because there's a specific question to be um, taken care of. Um, that's fine too. This is a very open forum and open live discussion. So I want it to be interactive. If you do have questions, please let me know. This is not going to be a super duper in-depth detail class, but if there's some in-depth detailed stuff you want to know at the end of the program, so all the people that <clears throat> came for the why tether part can leave, I will stay on as long as I need to, to answer questions, especially any more technically oriented and um, individual questions. Okay. So that's really cool. Um, so anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna take you over to here and uh, show you what tethering is all about. So really, I mean, you gotta think about what is tethering? Tethering basically is connecting a camera to a computer or a tablet or a monitor or something like that to view the images larger than you can on the back of the screen of the camera. That's the, the basic sense of it, but there's actually a lot more to it. Um, with tethering, you can be a creative on, on site and you can collaborate with people and um, you can be you know, looking for critical focus and exposure and how your subjects look and composition and all that easier than looking at the back of the screen. But there's a secondary part to tethering Okay, and this is what I'm going to get to at the end of the program, and that is the workflow is like cataloging this and also maybe like backing up your images. There's a lot of ways of getting the images from the camera to the computer, actually making them look good in the computer so you don't have to, you know, get back to the studio 
or if you're in the studio, you don't have to take the card out, put it in a card reader, bring it in, ingest it into a program, and then start working on it. You can actually be working on the images as you're shooting them. And that's really cool. And I can't wait to show you that in a few minutes. So if you're in a studio, this is what most people think of tethering. Most people think tethering is a studio workflow and that, um, you know, you have to be kind of like locked down in, the, in a studio environment to get the most of tethering, but you really don't. Um, tethering can work in a lot of different places. It can work out on location. So you can be on location doing tethering, um, you know, outside. Uh, just bring a... I mean, all I, I have the, the tethered solution I have here for my photography is so easy to take on location anywhere, set it up in just a couple of minutes, make sure you get the shot before you pack it back up and move to another location. This describes me and everything that I've got going on right now. I'm working solo. I am running a video production. I am shooting images. I'm teaching at the same time. And all of this is being done by one person. So there's a lot to tethering when it comes to helping out the people that are working solo. But not only working solo, like I said before, if you're collaborating with the team and you've got art directors and, and uh, models and stuff on site and you want to concentrate on the images being shot, but you're letting someone else look at the pictures and saying, yeah, let's do this, let's do that. That's collaboration with the team. And they don't have to be breathing over your shoulder looking at the back of the camera as you're shooting you can be taking care of that on, on another monitor someplace else away from where you are taking the pictures. Now, this is crucial. I mean, think about all of the stuff we've seen maybe over the last year, even a couple of years, where you see a lot of the Facebook like, um, like time-lapse videos of people putting together recipes or assembling projects. My wife does this with crafting. She videos herself putting together craft projects and she posts them on her Facebook page. Um, this is a fantastic reason to tether because you can't get the overhead shots and see the back of the screen of the camera because it's over your head. And so you got a computer down the side and then you can move everything around the way you need it and frame it perfectly. So overhead shots, absolute tethering um, is really crucial for this. And then even when you're on the move, Okay, so here's an example. I won't say this is real estate photography because it, real estate photography and, and um, architectural photography to me are two different things. Um, I've done both. Um, real estate is kind of a run and gun kind of thing that you need to get it done really fast. Um, but if you're doing like architecture pieces, like you're documenting the inside of a house, you can actually have more of like a mobile solution for this. Like if you have this, like this picture here, if you have a camera hooked up to like an iPad or a Surface Pro, um, computer or something like that, you can be looking at the critical corners to know that you didn't cut something off and that your lines are straight and the walls are straight and you have everything included in the image and nothing that you don't need. So you don't have to do a lot of post-processing later. If you get it right on site, you're in much better um, position to keep moving through that workflow. So thinking about that with tethering, those are, those are just a number of different ways of tethering. Okay, but what do you need to get started? You had two different ways that you can do tethering. You can do it either wired or wireless. Either way works great. I use both, okay? Um, I've, I usually tend to go wireless first just because it gives me more freedom. Um, I go wired second just in case it's just like sometimes it's just quicker and easier to set up kind of thing. Um, so let's talk about some of the differences between these two. Tether tools make something called a starter kit. So if you don't know where to start with a tethered workflow, this is the best place to be. So now you can have your choice of um, whatever 15 foot USB um, tether pro cable. Sorry, these are in feet and not meters. I usually, I don't teach classes in Europe uh, too often. Um, but a, but a, a 15 foot USB tether pro cable, but then it's not just the cable. The next most important thing in a wired tethered workflow is supporting the USB port on the camera. And I can't stress this enough. So we make something called a jerk stopper. And the jerk stopper is a simple device. I'll show you that in a moment. A simple device to keep this USB port on the camera from being damaged by moving that cable too much. Um, I used to work for a camera manufacturer and so did Jessica, um, two different manufacturers. Uh, but we've seen the repairs on USB ports and they're a minimum of like 300 US dollars to get a USB port repaired. So 
A little jerk stopper camera support is your best friend. Also on the other end with the computer support. So if you need to go, um, if, you, if you're worried about maybe someone tripping on a cable or something and pulling it out of the computer while you're shooting, uh, you can get a jerk stopper support for the computer side of things. I'll show you the one that I'm using today. And then there's a cable ties and an organization case. So if you just keep all that stuff in the case and when you need to go tethered with a shoot, you just pick the case up, open it up and connect to your favorite software and you're done. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. But how do you find out which cable do you need for your camera? On the Tether Tools website, there is a recommended search by camera feature right here. So if you just go to tethertools.com, search by camera, and then you plug in the, the make, the model of your camera, and then the USB port that you have on the other end on your computer, it will list exactly which cables are compatible with your particular setup. You may have like a USB-C computer, but a USB-3 camera. Um, you may have a, an older USB-2 camera and a USB-3 computer. So whatever the situation is for you, plug that in, put the information in, it tells you what you need. It's just that easy. So what is it about these Tether Pro cables? I and mean, we're kind of famous for these orange cables, okay? So, I mean, I'll show you this. I'm, I'm actually gonna stand for this presentation because it's a lot more comfortable. Um, we're famous for these orange cables. I've got tons of these things all, all over the place. You can see I've got some hanging here. I've got some hanging here. Um, these Tether Pro cables are made so well, okay? The thing about them is, is not just the durability, but it's also the uh, transfer speed, okay? Um, it's the transfer speed that allows the images to go from the camera to the computer as fast as they possibly can. These are made to the highest standards that USB protocol will allow for, for transfer. So the bonus is they last a long time, they're super strong, and they're really, really fast compared to a generic USB cable that may not keep up with a tethered workflow. So that's what a Tether Pro cable does. And by the way, these Tether Pro cables do come in, in a non-reflective black as well, but the orange is probably the most popular for what we have. The two cables that are probably most popular this, these days are USB-C cables. Um, every camera that I have here, I have a Sony a7R IV, um, I've got a Sony a7R IV right here. I'm looking at a Nikon Z6 right there. Um, I've got a 13 inch MacBook Pro and a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Every one of these devices is USB-C, okay? And that's the thing about the, um, the cables nowadays are usually everybody's getting USB-C because all the newest cameras are USB-C, all the newest computers and all the different peripherals and stuff. We're getting used to the USB-C world. I like it because you can plug it in any direction you want to. Um, and I always plug a USB cable in three times before I get it right. So the cool thing is about this cable right here, this is that 15 foot standard USB-C to USB-C cable. This one happens to have, as you can see, a right angle end on it right there. So this cable can come out of the camera and straight down into something like what I'm gonna show you, like a tether block um, or, uh, or if you're using an L bracket and you wanna use a wire clamp for the L bracket, you can do that. Um, certain cameras work better than others for the right angle cable. Um, I like the right angle more on my Nikon than I do on my Sony because of the port placement on the side, but I'm just letting you know that. Now, if you want to go longer than 15 feet, there's something you need to think about, and you'll see it in this picture right here. The cable to the right has this little block on the end. That's called the Tether Boost Pro Core Controller. Okay, this is a device that will actually tell the computer to not let the port, the USB port, go to sleep. What happens is um, if you're shooting and you put the camera down for a little bit to review images and um, you're going you know, longer than 15 feet with a standard cable, the USB port's probably gonna go to sleep and you lose your tethered connection. You're gonna have to wake that up to keep on shooting. What that little rectangle does right there is this used to be, um, uh, for USB 3, it's a separate um, small like one foot cable. Um, for USB-C, it's built into the extension. So that active extension, all you have to do is just plug one into the other, and that uh, core controller is gonna keep that computer port awake and not let it go to sleep. 
So that's going to be a really um, absolutely crucial thing for a tethered workflow. Uh, so yeah, you can see right here, I have that. So here's the, here's the regular cable. There's the active extension, just plug the two together. And now I got 30 feet worth of USB-C cable. And uh, that's easy. I certainly don't need 30 feet inside my room here. Um, I usually just run with a single uh, USB-C uh, 15 foot cable. So, all right, let's keep going. How do you protect the port? The jerk stopper camera support is the simplest device to protect the port on your camera. As you can see in this picture, it's a small lanyard that connects to the strap eyelet on the side of the camera that connects to the cable. So if the cable gets pulled or jerked, um, it won't pull out of the camera and it'll keep the, the wiggling in the port down because it's that constant wiggling and, and pressure that's being put on the USB port that ends up breaking the ports in the camera. Um, main, camera manufacturers don't make USB ports to a higher quality standard for tethered workflow. I really wish they would, but they just don't. So these ports, if they get pulled and pushed too many times, you're going to have to, you're going to get a, a shorted out connection. You're going to have to spend a lot of money to get it fixed. So this is the simplest method of actually um, protecting that. Now this does have a quick release on it. So if, if, if this is on a tripod, for example, and someone trips over the cable, it won't pull the whole tripod down. This will disconnect um, in the middle of the, uh, the grasp there um, and it will, it will come apart so it doesn't pull your whole camera down and it'll pull the cable out of the camera. But at least for that constant wiggling of the port, it really protects that. Then there is the same type of concept on the other end of things. So you got the camera support, but you also have the computer supports and we make a lot of different computer supports and I'm using a different one um, actually today than what I have shown uh, shown in these pictures, and I'll explain that to you when we get to my uh, my workstation. The next best thing is the tether block and the tether block Arca. If you're not familiar with what Arca Arca is or the Arca Swiss system of um, accessories, that's a brand name, but other manufacturers use the same grooves. If you look at the picture on the right, there is a groove down at the bottom of the thing that underneath where it says tether block. That's called an Arca Swiss dovetail, and that attaches to um, Arca Swiss like ball head style um, tripod heads and stuff. Um, so it makes life easy if you uh, if you want to take this plate, put it on, put the cable through, and then mount it to a, a ball head. You can do that with an Arca Swiss style head. It's really easy. I actually have that right here, and I want to show you how this works. I'm gonna change cameras on you. By the way, if you want to know, this is my setup right here. This is what I got going on. So I'm looking at you on that camera right there. And this is my workstation and my little photo studio setup. So I'm going to show you just what I got going on here with this Nikon. So this Nikon has the Tether Pro cable coming out of the USB, comes down, goes into a tether block, Arca underneath. And this is an actually Arca Swiss style head as well. So you can, you can um, easily mount the, uh, the cable into the uh, um, tether block and have it come out the other side. Now, one thing that I wanna make note, <clears throat> and that is when you use the tether block um, underneath, um, the cable comes from the left side and goes out the right side. I like the tether block personally for using it when I have my camera on a tripod holds it really secure and really well. Um, I don't use it as much for hand holding because the cable comes out the right side on, on the palm of my hand. I have another device I'm gonna show you in a second that we just came out with that I prefer to use um, because it keeps the cable off the left side of the camera. And um, it's just a, just a different workflow. And that's the reason why I'm doing this program for you to kind of share my thoughts and how all this works um, with you. Uh, and they give you some ideas on, on what we got going on here. Now, this is the tether block right here. So the tether block Arca, so you can see it's got the Arca Swiss grooves built into the sides of it right there. It's got three different cable paths. It's got one for a thick cable, a medium cable, and a thin cable, which can run through. This cable here that I use for an example is sort of like a medium cable. So you can run it through like this, and then you just screw it into the bottom of the camera. Um, you could take this 
and move these any way that you want to. So if I wanted to do it that way, because it comes out um, on this side better than this side right here, uh, you can move this around any way you want to. And then you screw it in the bottom of the camera and that cable is not coming out. So that's the real advantage to the uh, tether block is the cable just won't come out of the camera, which is what you want. Now, these are some new accessories that we have. The Tether Arca cable accessories. First of all, the one on the left is uh, made for the Air Direct, and I'm gonna show you the Air Direct in just a moment. But this, um, this accessory right here, uh, I'll come up here and show it to you like this. Mm, that camera. So this accessory is this one right here. So this is a cold shoe mount for my Air Direct wireless device and it mounts to and this right here. This is a three-legged thing L bracket. So it comes out and it goes up and it has the Arca Swiss grooves built into this L bracket. So I actually have this coming off and this coming up and then the um, Tether Arca AD clamp is right here, um, which is holding this on the side of the camera because I need the hot shoe for my Westcott lighting trigger right here and I need to put the air direct off to the side. Okay, so I'll show you more about that in just a moment, but I wanted to just show you what that accessory looks like. Now, the middle one is the one that I use now for all of my wired tethering. So if I'm shooting wired, I use this um, our Tether Arca cable clamp, and that cable clamp fits on the L bracket, as you can see in the bottom picture, and uh, it's a really cool device. So it kind of looks like this. And so I actually, um, I mount this, to the bottom here, I'll, I'll take this off later and mount this on so you can see how it does. But once this mounts onto the bottom right here, this cable's not coming out. This cable just stays in and is really, really sturdy and really solid. And I like that a lot. Now, the one that I don't use as often, but um, in a specific situation is gonna come in really handy. If you're on a tripod and you need to shoot vertical portrait style images, okay? Say you're doing, um, uh, step and repeat photography, high volume photography. Um, you're doing a lot of fashion shoot where you got to keep the camera steady in the same spot. And you just have models coming in and out. You can mount this vertically with this cable spacer and have the cables come out and be secured down and going into the, uh, into the computer um, and have enough space to run this vertical on an Arca style ball head. So it's got the grooves built into the bottom of it, as you can see in the top picture, and it holds the cables that way. So this is, these are all the different ways to keep the ports on your, com on your camera protected and keep your cables managed throughout your workflow. All right, so that's, that's what wired tethering is all about. Let's talk a little bit about wireless tethering. So this device that we have is called the Air Direct. Um, the Air Direct wireless tethering system is a really, um, it's a very robust, very solid connection Wi-Fi um, transmitter, okay? As, you, as I just showed you and you can see in this picture, it, it can live in the hot shoe of the camera on the top because it's got a cold shoe on it, but a lot of people put it on the side on an L bracket because they're using a lighting trigger in the hot shoe just like I'm going to be doing today. So what's so great about wireless tethering over wired tethering? Okay, each one has its advantages and I'll briefly go into that. Wired tethering has the ability to go, in U.S. terms, um, up to about 65 feet, okay? Wireless, with the Air Direct, can actually transmit up to 200 feet. So it gives you freedom of movement and longer distance, okay? Um, you have on this, both wired and wireless offer two-way communication from the camera to the computer and the computer back to the camera. So if you needed to set up a kind of like a remote camera um, where you can't get to it and you wanted to trigger it from the computer, you can do that wirelessly with AirDirect. You can also do it if you have a long enough cable to get to where you need to go with the cable, with the Tether Pro cable, but you can do a remote shooting with AirDirect. Um, it's really very easy to do. The AirDirect also features, if you look on the side, it has a, a switch in the middle. It says mobile and ADU. ADU stands for Air Direct Utility. That's the software that runs in the background on your computer, and it works with both Mac and Windows, by the way, and it works with all Mac operating systems too, all the way up through Big Sur. Um, 
So if your Mac or Windows, doesn't matter which operating system, this thing is fully compatible with all operating systems. Um, if you want to run to the computer, you use this little program called the AirDirect Utility. It just runs in the background. What that really does is um, whatever tethering software you're going to use, whether it be Smart Shooter, Capture One, Lightroom, um, whatever tethering software you're going to use, it actually reads that as you plugged it in at, with a USB cable. So it, it tricks the, the computer to thinking that you plugged it in with a wire when you really didn't. It's wireless. So it's really the same interface as far as the computer program um, knows. So this has two different Wi-Fi settings on it. You see on the side towards the front right there, it's got a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz setting. Now, the 2.4 gigahertz setting will get you that full 200 foot range, okay? As where the 5 gigahertz setting will get you a little faster speed. It will still go 100 to 125 feet, which is longer than USB. So either way, this thing is really um, outstanding when it comes to distance. So if that's an important factor for you, distance is, is the most important. The difference between wired and wireless is transfer speed. A wired connection will be faster. A wireless connection will not be as fast as a wired connection, but it's still on this device rather fast. I'm just gonna tell you real quick, okay, just, just to kind of get you um, what I've tested with uh, my cameras here. The Nikon Z6 that I have, just real fast to give you an idea of the transfer speeds, which I, well, I'm not going to go into in depth today on this program, but just to let you know, the Nikon Z6 has its own built-in Wi-Fi to it, and it can connect from camera to the computer. What you do when you connect from camera to computer is you're shooting pictures to the card, and then when you find an image you like, you hit transmit. And you hit the transmit button, send to the computer. And when it starts sending, it starts, there's a little arrow on the back of the screen that starts to light up. Well, a raw file, a compressed raw file out of a Z6 camera is 36 to 37 megabytes in size, okay? It takes about 33 seconds to transmit that one picture from the camera to the computer, okay? I hooked up the AirDirect to the same camera shot the same size file, about 36, 37 megabytes. It went from the camera to the computer in five seconds instead of 33 seconds, which is a really big difference. And it's every picture that I can take because it'll buffer the images. So I can shoot a lot of pictures in a row and every five seconds that image was showing up in the computer. So what would it have been like with a cable? If I plugged it in with a cable instead of the AirDirect, it would have taken about a second or a second and a half. So the cabled version is a lot faster than wireless, but the air direct wireless is a lot faster than the cameras built in wireless. That leads me to a couple other quick things as well. First of all, you can also bridge this air direct with an existing Wi-Fi network. Can't do that with a camera. So if you need to shoot from the camera to the computer wirelessly, but you need the computer to be on the internet, you can bridge to your existing internet through this device so you can have both, okay? The other main advantage to this is that this AirDirect uses its own battery, okay? And you can swap the batteries out in the middle of a shoot if needed. This battery lasts quite a long time. I actually, um, just to let you know, I did a shoot in here in this space um, not too long ago with, with a Nashville band. Um, nice, nice bunch of guys. They needed headshots for a release of a single that they just put out on, on uh, Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff. Um, if you want to know, the band is called Lily Prex, L-I-L-Y space P-R-E-X. So Lily Prex, P-R-E-X. And uh, they're kind of a cool, they're, they're, 25 years old and they're playing like 80s hard rock stuff, which is my favorite stuff. It's really cool. Good band. Super nice guys. But we were shooting in here and um, I decided to shoot wireless for the sole reason that I had a lot of people moving around in here. And if I were shooting with a cable on the floor, that probably would have gotten tripped over. So I was shooting wireless the entire time. I was shooting raw files the entire time. And we shot for a solid hour and a half without stopping. And I did it all on one battery on the AirDirect. 
and it worked like a champ. Never lost the connection ever and worked great the whole entire time. So that's just to let you know what my personal experience is with Air Direct in an actual shoot. Um, it works really, really great for, uh, for the mobility. So I'm able to walk around and shoot and using this exact setup for what I just told you. Now, a couple of things I wanna show you about Air Direct. You'll notice on the side right here, there's two lights. Okay, there's a green light and a blue light. The green light is the battery light and that's showing you the battery is full. Okay, once you start using this battery a little bit more, this green light here will start to turn yellow and then it'll turn red. And when it turns red, that means you need to swap this battery out and put a new one in, okay? Well, how do you do that without losing your wired connection? I mean, you're not using the battery power in the camera, and if you were using a camera Wi-Fi, you'd be using the battery power in the camera. Well, how do you do that without losing the connection? Well, the really cool thing is the AirDirect ships with, not only does it ship with all of the cables you could possibly need to connect from AirDirect to any camera, um, but it also ships with a USB to DC port cable, which is looks just like this. There's a little DC port on the side of the AirDirect. I plug this in, and I'm going to show you what I've got going on here. A little bit closer up and a little clearer. I know that wasn't 100% focus. Um, so right now, I have got this cable in the DC port. This is actually coming down to a USB battery pack right here. Um, so this is a Tether Tools 87-watt. USB battery pack and I have this plugged in. So this is supplying power to AirDirect right now. And as you can see on the side, I've got my connection lights. If I pull this out, or I'm sorry, I push this in, I am connected to that battery. And if I pull this out, you'll notice that the light's still on. I haven't lost power because this is what's delivering the power now. Okay, so I could actually run, if I were on a tripod and I were running wireless, but on a tripod, I would strongly consider using a battery like this to do the job for me. How long will that battery last? This battery here, I tested out 36 hours. Um, it stayed connected to AirDirect. So, but now I can swap this battery out with a new one, put a new battery inside, pull it off, and I still have my connection lights. So I had never lost the connection by changing the battery out here just by using that, um, that little DC port. So that is a really, really cool thing about AirDirect is that you can hot swap batteries out without losing your wired wireless connection because there's nothing worse with wireless when you lose the connection and then you gotta take, you know, one, two, three, four, five minutes to regain that connection. AirDirect stays connected, okay? I hope we're doing well. Let's see, have you used AirDirect for two hours without needing to change battery? Yes, John. Um, I was pumping a lot of files. I was, an, I was an hour and a half and it just barely turned red um, which I probably could have gotten another 30 minutes out of it, but I, I was pumping a lot of gigabytes worth of raw files out of a 60 megapixel camera on that. So, Tetherbox pigtail and extender is the best thing since orange cables. <laughs> cool. All right. So good stuff happening in the chat, and um, I'm going to start taking you through a little bit more of some of this awesome stuff here, and tell you about AirDirect when it comes to a mobile solution. Now, there's one thing to know. Mobile feature on AirDirect works right now for Nikon and Canon only. We are working on a Sony solution for this. Um, I don't know when that's going to happen. I've been a part of the team that is redesigning the app, and also they're going to add Sony support and hopefully some others as well. But right now, the Sony is the biggest one. Um, but for this feature that I'm going to talk about right now, this is for Nikon and Canon shooters. So I've got the same, as you can see, this is my typical studio setup because I'm limited on space and I'm limited on subjects. At least I have some decent subjects here. Um, this AirDirect mobile tethering air remote app is a free app that comes with AirDirect. This is a really cool app. Um, what you're gonna do is when you connect this, and I had it connected to my iPad, for example, in this example here, and I was taking some pictures, but I wasn't shooting them to the iPad. I was actually shooting them to the card in the camera and the Air Remote app was actually viewing them on the iPad, okay? So I only have a 16 gigabyte iPad, which is pretty pathetic these days. And, uh, but I, I can use that as a monitor, as a tethered solution, as a monitor to view the images, but they're going to the card in the camera. 
which is just fine. And that's the cool thing about a mobile tethering solution. You can use an iPad or, or some sort of like an Android device or an Android tablet to view your images larger and not clog the device up with all of the images. Now, if you wanted to download a picture to the iPad, you could click on the picture and just hit download button and it'll go straight there. But I don't want every image that I shoot that's you know 60 something megabytes in size to go to a device that only has 16 gigs worth of memory in it. And it's actually, you know, there's only like two gigs available. So that would clog it up pretty fast. Now the Air Remote app has a lot of functionality to it. You can actually control all of your exposure functions, you know, your drive mode functions, your metering modes, image quality, everything. You can control everything on the camera from this app. So this is a great mobile solution for actually controlling the camera. You can do other things too, like um, you can do exposure bracketing, you can do like bulb mode, there's even a focus stacking uh, ability in here, time lapse, you can do video from this. So it will, it will control the camera in a lot of different ways. And um, it's, a really, it's a really cool solution for having a simple tethered workflow. Okay, so yes, I'm using my camera just like this with the Air Direct um, with the Westcott lighting system on top. And I'm using, oops, sorry. Uh, uh, the Air Direct Arca clamp for the L bracket, which I showed you before. Okay, so that's holding that on there. In this solution, also, I have my tripod here. My tripod is just a, it's a, um, it's a Gitzo travel tripod. Um, it's not really super, super tall. I'm a, a tall person. And so I like to use this rock solid master articulating arm with a clamp um, on the tripod itself so I can hold the iPad up higher. And, uh, but you could actually put the iPad straight into a ball head if you wanted to. And if you didn't need to use the arm, you could do that also. Because the iPad connects to this whole system with this AeroTab universal tablet system, you can mount, um, you can mount the iPad um, either in the ball head or on this arm or pretty much to any, anything that you want to. I mean, it's a really great mounting system for a mobile solution. Then you can power your iPad. I don't know, my iPad's a little older, the battery isn't quite as good, but that battery that I showed you before that was running the Air Direct, that's the battery that I would just plug into since it's got regular USB ports on it. Um, this battery can charge a lot of stuff and it was just charging the iPad as I was using it, as you can see how it's set up here. This battery, by the way, has the ability to actually recharge a MacBook Pro one full time. So if you're using your computer and your computer goes like way down into the single digits on percentage, you can plug USB-C right into the side of this thing and it will charge your MacBook Pro all the way back up. It's a pretty amazing battery. How do you hold the battery on? That's with this guy called the Stratmore. So you, you wrap the battery around the tripod leg with the Stratmore and uh, you've got a simple, movable, mobile solution right there. So that's a mobile, a mobile workflow solution for you. What I want to talk to you about now is what do you do if you're going to be on location with your computer? Okay, this is called the Tether Table Aero System. This is actually what I'm using right here as well. So I have a Tether Table Aero on here on that same tripod that I was talking about because I love this tripod. It's, it's carbon fiber, super, super light. I've had it for many, many years and uh, it's just my favorite, favorite travel tripod. Um, so I'm going to actually go through different pieces to show you what this takes to make a um, kind of a mobile tethered photo solution um, just like this. So you can actually have, I mean, you saw when I, when I showed you my whole workstation, I have this type of setup over on the right that's holding the uh, camera that's doing all the video work. Um, but really it all starts here with the te tether table arrow. There's two different sizes. There's a traveler and a master. It depends on how big you need it. The computer I'm gonna be shooting into here today is a 16 inch MacBook Pro and it's on a master table. Um, it's a larger table uh, and so it holds more stuff. And uh, I like this table a lot. They're really super lightweight and they come with their own bag and everything. So you could just drop it straight in the bag and you're ready to go. The, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I wanted to show you the bracket for the bottom of it though is the, is the most important thing. The bracket actually has the Arca Swiss grooves built into it. It has, um, it has a, a notch for the, uh, like a C-stand or a baby stud. It has a quarter 20 screw in the middle and it has a three eighths screw for um, like a tripod base. 
um, on the other side. So you can mount this onto pretty much anything you want to. Outside of the first kit that I showed you, which was the how to get started kit, after that, you can go with what's called a pro tethering kit. And this just is actually a really great way of seeing what do you need to get a, uh, a tethered workstation like I have here. You supply your own tripod, pick your table size, traveler or master, um, then you get the non-slip pro pad for it, okay, that the, that the uh, computer sits on. You get the external drive bay, which is in the front left corner there. I'll show you that in a moment. You get the secure strap, which is my best friend. You get some hooks that you can hook the cables onto. You get a cup holder off to the side, which is so important for anything you want to drink or hold. Um, you get the jerk stopper clip on computer support. You get a strap more to hold the, uh, like if you wanted to hold the AC adapter to your computer on the leg of the tripod, you can do that too. Um, you get an organization case for it all, and you get a, a table case to hold the, uh, the table in. And these tables weigh almost nothing. They're really high-grade aluminum, and they, they don't really weigh very much at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these pieces in real life. So let's go here. So this is my, my table, the way it's set up right now. And as you can see, this is a 16-inch MacBook Pro, okay? Um, this is... Um, this is the tether table uh, master with the non-slip pro pad right here. This is also the external drive bay solo right there. So I have my external drive in here connected to my computer. The all important strap that is actually holding the computer on to the table, which is really great. So that's the strap. Um, I'm using, like I said before, I want to show you what my jerk stopper is right here. This is the, the, um, the one that clamps on like this. I just like this one because it's easy to put on and take off. And then I have my cable right there. So that's ready to go. Um, underneath the table, you'll see that this drive bay right here actually mounts to the bottom of the table and stays on permanently. Um, this other mount behind here is for what we call a DTAP battery. Um, and that DTAP battery can be mounted underneath here to power your whole workflow as well. Um, this is actually in a Manfrotto ball head. So here's the quick release plate that's attached to the uh, center right here. So all I have to do is just hit this, pull this, and I can take this table off in a second. And so that's just connected to my, uh, my simple um, Gitzo tripod right there. So you can see like over here, I was talking about how I have other things set up. Like I have this workstation, the, uh, the crossbar, and the side arm, and this is a tether table uh, traveler. This is a utility tray, by the way. This isn't a tether table, this is a utility tray that will hold um, smaller devices, and I just use this to hold stuff. And uh, there's an organization case right there. So you can see how all of this kind of works and fits into my workflow, like this. All right, cool. Can you run Arimo app on Android? based TV. I have no idea, Johan. I don't have an Android based TV to do that. You can also ask um, if anybody has any questions that I can't answer here. Um, it, you can email tech support at tethertools.com. Jessica, if you want to put that in the uh, in the comment area, um, if there's something that's like an, an interesting question like that, um, we have uh, somebody back at the office who has more access to individual things like that and be able to research it. So if you need to research that solution, um, there's a guy named Damon back there that can help you out with this. So that's cool. So tech support, tethertools.com. All right, so here's another thing. The tripod roller. This means that you can move things around. And I actually, I do have that right here on this one because I sometimes take this table and I might move this someplace else in my room, in my space. So this is on wheels and also this is on wheels too. So I have a lot of stuff on wheels. It gives me flexibility to move stuff around. Then, okay, so here we get into the fun stuff. I've been showing you a lot of stuff. I hope this is really helping guys. I really do. Smart Shooter, um, how do you get the images into the computer and what program can you use for it? There's a bunch of different programs. Uh, Capture One is a great program. Capture One supports tethering. Capture One also 
uh, works on images, manipulates images, catalogs images, does a lot of things similar to Lightroom. Lightroom is a great program too. Lightroom is a little weird on, thank you, Anders, um, on tethering uh, by itself. And sometimes it's a little finicky with that. Uh, Smart Shooter is a program that, um, that Tether Tools makes that its sole function is to get the images from the camera into the computer and then you can do whatever you want to with them. Okay. So it's a, um, it's a program that's just, that's its whole purpose. It's not a program for processing or manipulating. It's not a program for cataloging or anything like that. You can use Smart Shooter to get the images in and then use another program to do all of that other work. So it's a really simple but very robust program. Comes in two shapes and sizes here. Okay, there's Smart Shooter 4 and Smart Shooter 4 Pro. Here's the US pricing on both, $69.95 and $195.95. I will say that 90% of people don't need the Pro version. Okay, Smart Shooter 4 and Smart Shooter 4 Pro both do the same tethered um, shooting. They both do the same remote control capabilities. They both support live view on cameras. They both have a certain number of prepackaged scripts um, for like, uh, if you want to do bracketing or bulb shooting or HDR or focus stacking and stuff, those scripts are built into both of these. The pro version allows you some high end features like multi camera shooting. So you can actually shoot up to eight cameras into a single computer, into a single program at the same time with smart shooter Four pro. So if you need to shoot more than one camera, and you want to shoot up to eight, you can do that with the pro version. Then the other big thing for the pro version is it supports barcode scanning through the lens. So if you're going to be doing any high volume photography and you need to take a picture of the barcode to tell what the file name would be, and then take pictures after that until the next barcode, you can do that. Then it also supports things like, um, um, external API integration and, um, and, uh, um, creating your own scripts if you know how to do all that programming. So, but both programs include the really awesome Lightroom Classic plugin for Sony and Nikon. Now, why isn't this for Canon? Well, Adobe and Canon need to kind of catch up to each other, which they're in the process of doing on how some of their files work together. Canon shooters can use um, a Smart Shooter 4 to photograph and put into a what we call a hot folder or a watch folder and then have Lightroom pick it out of that folder and bring it into a catalog. It's just an extra step. But for the very first time, Sony shooters now have the ability to shoot directly into Lightroom Classic, into a, into a Lightroom Classic um, catalog without having to go through that hot folder or watch folder step. The nice thing is the Nikon shooters have had it great this whole entire time. They could shoot directly into Lightroom Classic and it works wonders. But this is the way that Sony shooters um, are wanting to get into Lightroom Classic. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to now, I'm gonna turn my light on up here and uh, let's take some pictures. What do you say? Okay, so I've got, in my studio here, I have got some Westcott lighting. Um, I like Westcott lights, they're really cool. Um, this is an FJ400 up here with a, an Octa, S box and this is an FJ 200 with a grid right down here that will shoot a second light into uh, this guitar right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you that wired connection for this and you may ask why are you going wire wired Scott you said you like wireless. I do prefer wireless um, first and foremost but the way that I have things going is I'm using the Wi-Fi on this computer to transmit the signal to this computer so you can see that. Okay, so I can't have the air direct on there at the same time. It's the only caveat. So it's not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm in the studio by myself, well, I'm here with all of you, but I'm actually gonna connect this onto the camera right now. And this just connects really fast. So plug the USB cable in, just bring this up through the bracket and then just tighten this down. And there I have, I've got this new wire clamp. So remember I told you before that I like the wire clamp because it keeps the cable off the left side because my right hand isn't bumping into the cable coming out of the tether block. So this isn't going anywhere. So this is actually screwed into 
my three-legged thing L bracket with this cable clamp, which is holding everything really, really strong. So I'm gonna turn my camera on and turn my Westcott trigger on. So I've got everything running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you some images as they're shooting into here, okay? Um, I'm going to go over, I'm gonna take a picture first of all with just this light so you can see what it's doing. Now this is where tethered workflow comes in because I'm not gonna be looking at the back of the camera. I'm gonna be watching this monitor over here which I will broadcast to you so you can see what the images look like. But since I am in like a studio situation, I'm able to shoot pictures, look at it big and see sharpness, see exposure, see everything as it's being shot. Okay, so I'm just gonna shoot this light up here, which is group A. And uh, let's uh, turn this over here and we'll watch the images come in. All right, so here's group A. And there's the image right there. So that's, that's a uh, one, basically just one uh, light. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that light off and turn on B and show you what B is doing. And if I have to make any adjustments, I will. Can I fire? Yep, there it is. So as you can see, this is more like a fill light down at the bottom. Now if I turn both on and take the same picture again, they'll add together and probably look a little bit brighter, a little bit nicer. Okay, so now you can see I've got a little bit of a highlight down at the bottom. So I would actually, since I can see that, I'm going to shoot a little bit tighter and do that. Now it looks better. Okay, so this right now, as you can see, I'm shooting wired into this computer, which I'm showing you over here. So as we look at these images, what can I do right here? I can take this loop view and I can move it around and I can zoom in on the picture and see what I got going on, just like so. And I can be looking at critical focus and stuff. I can also swap these two views out and I can also show you like larger on the right hand side of the screen. So this is what Smart Shooter does really well. It brings the image in and enables you to see what you got going on. Now Smart Shooter over here, as you can see, Smart Shooter says I have a Sony A7R4 camera hooked up. I can also, just to show you this, it shows the power level of the battery. It shows you storage. This is an update we just did. Smart Shooter just got an update that brought a lot of functionality to Sony cameras, including the new Sony A1. This is an A7R4, the A7 III. Uh, Whole bunch of newer Sony cameras um, are able to actually use this program in a cool way. Before, you weren't able to select disc, card, or both. So you can actually shoot to both the card and the disc of the computer now, so you have a backup on the card. You can do that also with Nikon, and you can also do that with Canon. So now you have that ability with Sony as well. And Sony before didn't allow us to look at menus like this to be able to choose aperture, shutter speed, ISO, for example. You had to use these plus minus buttons on the right hand side. Well, you can still use these if you wanted to change your shutter speed, change your aperture, change your ISO, you can still use these or you can just go to the drop down list and use that now. You can change your quality settings. Say I wanted to shoot um, raw and JPEG both, I can do that. Um, I could change a lot of different stuff inside here. So this is actually controlling the camera and now you can see that I'm getting images into the computer and I'm able to see the larger, and I know that this is a, a proper exposure. Now, here's where the cool stuff comes in. Smart Shooter for Preferences, there's a tab in here for Lightroom. Here's your Install Lightroom Plugin tab right there. It comes in both versions. So all I have to do is install the plugin, and I say OK, and then I come over to Lightroom Classic, and now I'm going to start Lightroom Classic, and I'm gonna shoot into this catalog. You'll see a bunch of pictures of my guitars in here because this is the catalog I use for all these classes. So here's what we were doing yesterday. Uh, I did this last night with, with a bunch of people. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up in here and I'm gonna say File, Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. And I'm going to bring this up and it detects the camera. And now this window right here shows the Sony A7R4 
It shows my shutter speed. It shows my aperture setting. It shows my ISO setting. It shows my white balance setting. And this is the develop module setting in the Lightroom. I'm gonna say none for right now. And I'm gonna move this back down out of the way. Now I could hit this silver button on the right and take a picture because if you're on a tripod or something, you're doing product photography, you can just shoot from right here and you don't have to move the camera. But I'm just gonna shoot a picture straight in just like we did a couple of moments ago. Okay, so we're gonna take a picture. Here we go. And that picture shows up now in Lightroom just like this. If I tab back over to Smart Shooter, it's here in Smart Shooter as well. The same exact picture. So you can have Smart Shooter running at the same time as Lightroom if you want to. You can divide them up between two different screens if you want to. You can have a lot of control over this. But what if we wanted to take this image and do something different with it? I like this guitar because it looks really good in the low contrast black and white setting. And I'm going to take another picture and let's take a look at this. Okay, click and here it comes. Okay, so low contrast black and white setting. Looks kind of cool. Now for all you Photoshop experts out there who are a lot more knowledgeable than I am, you're gonna hate me for bringing up clarity and contrast and stuff like that. But the other thing I wanna do is I wanna take, and I wanna do that sort of like spotlight rock and roll look. So the post crop vignetting, I'll bring that all the way down like this, just so it looks different. Now, when I did this, if I go to the develop setting down here and I say same as previous, this is where the magic of tethering comes in, okay? Now I will be able to shoot pictures from the camera to the computer and have the computer do the processing work already for me. So I don't have to do the post-processing on this if I know how I want it to look. So let's go ahead and shoot some pictures and take a look and see what this comes out like. So I'm gonna shoot, I'll shoot a wider angle picture like this. These are kind of cool. I, I've been, as you can tell, I've done this before, but it gives you that kind of cool spotlighty kind of look. You know, if I wanna come in here and shoot more like this, I can do this. I don't know where those lights are landing. Yeah, this one's gonna land someplace weird. So I'll move that over a little bit. Come up like that. Yeah, that's cool. So now you can see like, even the texture of the, uh, the black thing that I have it sitting on is kind of neat. You know, if I wanted to come in and just take a picture of like the electronics, everything that I shoot is going into Lightroom Classic processed already. I mean, look at that. Look at the detail in that. Look at everything. I got to dust my guitar off, it looks like. But if I go back over to Smart Shooter, here's all the color original images in Smart Shooter. So I can be taking these images and I can be looking at the loop views like this, and I can be looking for, well, that's way, that's a little bit out of focus, sorry. Um, I can be looking at seeing if things are in focus or not. And it looks like that one is, but that one isn't that Jackson word right there. Um, so I can go back to Smart Shooter and make adjustments, or it can be here in Lightroom Classic, shooting images the way I want them to look straight into the program. So, Tell you, I'm getting out of breath, having a good time. That is, I'm hoping that you understand that that's the reason why you tether. The reason why I'm tethering here is to get those images in, have a workflow going from one program into the other and have Lightroom Classic fi finish it out. I've been using Lightroom for a lot of years, so I am sort of ingrained in the Lightroom workflow but you can do the same thing in Capture One as well. Capture One's a really cool program that I like using also. But for the, um, for the Smart Shooter workflow, going into Lightroom Classic, this is cool. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna take a look at some of the questions, bring Jessica back up. Let's see what's going on. I use Lightroom, but it's very annoying that you cannot tether with it. Not Lightroom, Lightroom Classic. Yes, correct. That's, a, that's an Adobe thing. So, uh, Jess, did you see any other questions I needed? I can't hear you, Jess. No, sometimes she has problems with audio after a while in webinar jam. She's going to leave the room and come back in. Can, can you, can you hear I, me? I, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I just restarted. There was one more question in there. 
uh, but I lost my chat uh, when I reset when I reset. But it was, can you run the Air Remote on the Android TV? It was a. Uh, uh, yeah, I mentioned that in the middle. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't have an Android based TV, so I really don't know. That's why I said, you know, they can call, email tech support at tethertools.com with the question, because if it does work, um, I'll find out about it. And if it doesn't work, maybe that's something that we need to look into. And that's going back to the, uh, the home office in, in Arizona. So they would, uh, they would know more about a specific thing like that than I would. I only know what my stuff is. Um, is it possible to tether with Lightroom? Um, it no. is it's possible to tether with Lightroom Classic. Classic only. Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom does not support tethering at all. Uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic, which is confusing as anything, but uh, <laughs> it does support tethering 100%. But that's a big difference between Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So write to your favorite Adobe rep and say, hey, what's going on? <laughs> but I think, uh, I think that's actually all... Um... I think that's all the questions. That's all the questions? Yep. That was a great well, conversation. I really, uh, I really hope that since there's no questions that I actually gave you all the information you needed um, and, uh, and had a good time today. As you can tell, I enjoy doing this. I thank you all for your time um, in, uh, in listening to me today. Uh, and I hope uh, you all have a great evening. And this was a lot of fun. And I want to see you again. I'd like to see you in person make a trip out to Sweden sometime with Jessica. We will see you guys all back here on uh, June 16th. Scott, um, I will be on, but Scott will be the, the main show. Um, we will be talking about the difference, but differences between wired and wireless uh, tethering to help you better understand when the Air Direct is a great fit versus the cable or when the cable is just the ultimate fit that, that you're looking for within your workflow. Um, that event is June 16th and we will be sending out an email reminder as we get closer. So thank you all so much for joining us. And again, thank you to our friends over at IFO for helping to put this event on with us. We really appreciate you all. Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, the next class will have some redundant information from what I've done today, but I will concentrate a little bit more on those topics. Um, but I'm glad that uh, this was very satisfying. Thanks a lot. Well, good, I'm glad. That makes me feel better because all I can see is a camera lens and comments. So I'm hoping that you all uh, had a good time and laughed at my dumb jokes and all that good stuff. So uh, without further ado, this will be recorded and you'll get a, uh, a uh, link to it again if anybody else needs to see it. So, Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day. <laughs>